Hello everyone, welcome to Scorched Earth Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of Yamato's 160 scale Queed Loon Rao toys. I might be pronouncing that wrong, if I am, I apologize. These toys were re originally released in uh, 2004. The Myria toy MSRP'd for 12,800 yen, the Max for 9,800 yen, being that the, the discrepancy is because the Myria toy came with a Myria pilot figure. How this pilot figure, which is just a solid piece of plastic, would warrant that much of an increase in expenses beyond me. I guess there's a second piece for her face, but whatever. Um, 12,800 yen is a lot of money for a toy that does not transform. To put that in perspective, Bandai's version 1 DX VF25 toys MSRP at 12,000 yen, so slightly less than this toy here. Uh, let's get into what these toys offer you. We have one big gimmick that I'll just go to straight off the bat, and that is a cockpit. And you can pull out everything here, exposing a cockpit. You could then place the Myria figure if your toy came with one right in there. There was a 2008 reissue of the Myria toy and she no longer included the uh, pilot figure and it was just at the 9800 yen mark. Uh, I don't really know why. I don't really get the justification. I don't understand why you would even bother with this complex cockpit area if you weren't going to have pilot figures. Because, I mean, think about it, without this complexity, this toy is actually probably pretty simple to do and could have been done at a fraction of the price. So, uh, an interesting business decision by Yamato there. Okay, so, now there is a pilot figure inside the cockpit. Let's go through kind of the other gimmicks here. There is an opening missile bay. It's kind of nice how that was implemented. Individual missiles there. Fairly well detailed. Not really compared to later toys, but whatever. There's also a pod here. Um, I can show you Max's open missile pod. So you just pop this pod off, replace it with an open pod. Obviously, you'd much rather see an integrated opening missile pod there. Uh, there's nice detail on these thrusters here, and those thrusters kind of appear all over the toy. Uh, that's how this mecha would uh, move around in space. Alright, so let's get into articulation. As you can see, the toy becomes pretty floppy because the back of the toy has a lot of weight on it. Um, and so a lot of people very quickly get frustrated with this toy. Makes a decent display piece if you've got some patience. And of course you could do things like try to get to the joints and stiffen them up with a little clear nail polish or something like that. Um, so, you have a shoulder that lets you come out. Also lets you rotate. And you can rotate the joint underneath the shoulder and the shoulder armor on top of it as well. There is a swivel right before the elbow. There is the elbow joint. Let's get to about 90 degrees. These days we're used to seeing a little bit more than that. Uh, the hands are nice, articulated fingers. And they rotate on the wrist. That's cool. The head has a little bit of back and forth. It's very awkwardly implemented, but it's there. The hip comes back. Obviously you're going to run into that backpack. It goes forward. Nice clicky knee joint. Not a huge range of motion. And then the ankles, which really could use some more stiffness, uh, do offer a little back and forth and some up and down. All right, so there's no twisting point inside the knee. Um, and you do have a lot of things that are blocking your mobility. Uh, this little piece here can go back and forth to free up some room for the legs. But uh, it doesn't really do a whole lot for you. So... All in all, these toys are extremely overpriced, probably because they incorporated a gimmick Yamato ended up failing to use very well. Yamato later sold a separate Myria set of her in that 
about the same size as the pilot figure, uh, which, by the way, is slightly underscaled. She looks like she's not really a 160 scale pilot figure. So in the end, very expensive, very limited audience. Uh, I'm surprised it got reissued in 2008, but it uh, originally went on sale, then went on sale for steep discounts, and then eventually became a collector's item, got reissued, and now it's still very readily available at a discount. So if the design appeals to you, there's very little likelihood anyone's going to come by and make another deluxe version of this toy. If you're looking for the best Macross product, this is definitely not it. Visit anymoon.com. I'll have line art comparisons and comparisons to other toys. Thanks for viewing.